What's up, people? I'm Shaggy, the opinionated hippie, and today I'm doing the my top 10, having a hard time speaking because it's cold. Just got home and trying to get this knocked out before the room heats up. Uh, my top 10 favorite Dire Straits songs uh, per the unwritten law. I just did the album, so now I got to do with the top 10 songs. Um, don't think there's many surprises on this list, especially if you've seen the album uh, ranking. Um, one song from their last two albums did sneak on this list. Otherwise, it's very heavy on those two, three, and four albums, which I think are pretty fantastic. Um, yeah. How do we get here from Zappa? If you didn't watch the previous video, the Brecker brothers played on Brothers in Arms and on the Zappa in New York 76 shows. Sting, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sting played with both. Um, and Tony Levin played in King Crimson with Adrian Ballou and Adrian Ballou was in Zappa's band in 77 and 78. So yeah, that's three of the many connections. I'm sure there are more. Mark Knopfler played with Dylan. Dylan once showed up at Zappa's house. Zappa mocks, impersonates, pays tribute to Dylan um, on Flakes. So yeah, my top 10 favorite songs. I'm just going to go through them. And then at the end, I will put up a list so you can look at them if you're a visual learner. And then you tell me what your favorite are, which ones I missed or which ones I should re-listen to because you think they're worthy of listening to. Um, yeah, and that's it. So uh, let's go, people. Number 10, the only one off the last two albums just snuck onto this list off Brothers in Arms, Your Latest Trick. It's, uh, I think, the fourth song on side A, so it follows like hit so far away, mega hit, uh, money for nothing, other mega hit walk of life. And then you get your latest trick, which is this very cool, I always imagine it's like I'm driving in a taxi on a late night in a city. It's lightly raining, like drizzling. And I'm like hitting a bunch of clubs and I'm just, or maybe we're just driving around on destination to someplace else. And I'm just looking out the window through all the other things. That is the movie that the music makes. And the movie makes me want, the music makes me want to be the story. Um, and the story of this song is a late city night. There's some just great, kind of cheesy saxophone, but for me it works. Just this awesome saxophone riff that's like, um, I was humming it to myself a minute ago, but now that I'm making this video, no, no, da, 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 I'm now I'm singing the single-handed sailor riff. Um, uh, you do, and your latest, na, 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 Oh, just a beautiful song. I just, I think the most atmospherically perfect song on Brothers in Arms. Um, yeah, I just really like it. I, I really like the vibe. I really like definitely the late night city feel that it gives me. The lyrics, of course, lend to that. That's kind of what the lyrics are about, but the music fits it perfectly. Kind of a, there was a Glenn Fry song in the 80s that had like a saxophone, it wasn't like the heat of the night, but that other one that it also kind of reminds me of, um, right, it was a Glenn Fry song. But anyways, this is a very 80s saxophone city feel um, in the best way possible. My number 10, your latest trick. My number nine is Single-Handed Sailor off Communique. I love the opening sort of riff in this. One, the groove is just great. It's just this great, almost like late 70s, just kind of FM radio rock, maybe a little soft rock type vibe. Really good groove, kind of mellow, kind of laid back. But the opening riff is this series of just little guitar lines. It's like, na 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 and all these little riffs, it's like three notes, na 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 na, they don't resolve. It's like, you feel like it's supposed to like, da na 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 na, but it doesn't. It always goes, da na 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 na. And then you're left like hanging, da na 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 na, you're hanging again, da na 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 na, and you're hanging again. And there's one, one of the little phrases, I think it's, there's eight of them, and I think it's number six, that it's like, da na 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 na, and you're like, oh, it resolves. But then you go back to that, da na 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 na, and you're just kind of left hanging there, and then it goes into the lyrics, and that little riff part repeats later in the song. But it's just a really good kind of mellow groove, um, and that just guitar part, I don't know, man, it's just so, like, compelling because it just feels so unfinished, but that's like part of the attraction of it. And that one time he does actually finish it, you're like, oh, and then we're back into non being unfinished. So just a really neat, just a really neat opening sort of melody that the guitar plays. And just, I, I like the overall vibe of the song. Um, 
It's like a really good, it's like the, the penultimate song on Communique. It just hits in the perfect spot. Nice little slow groove, kind of harkens back to like the open ear, uh, uh, Once Upon a Time in the West and that kind of just kind of like, like laid back type of, just kind of jammy type thing. And then the following song kind of finishes it up with some sweetness and a really nice poignant guitar based ending. But yeah, love this song apart from the album, but on the album it works so well that it makes me love it even more. Number nine, Single Handed Sailor. Number eight, Private Investigations off Love Over Gold. This is his, uh, his prog rock noir track. It's sort of about somebody who's doing his own investigation. This is not a public inquiry. This is my investigation. Um, yeah, and he kind of mumbles, mutters his way through it as if he's like this grizzled, like, private eye in, a, in an office with a glass door that says Mark Knopfler on it. It's in black and white, and he's smoking cigarettes, and some, you know, brunette walks in with a, more trouble than he's seen in his life. And it's just, it's got this great vibe. And he kind of sets the scene, and then we get to this line where it's like, it's private investigation. Doom. Doomed. And then we're off in like this really neat sort of musical landscape that has some nice guitar legs, some really sort of dramatic flourishes. It feels like this investigation is going somewhere. Maybe there's another murder. Maybe somebody got shot. Maybe he's in danger. Who knows? It kind of plays out as if it is a soundtrack to a to like a noir film, um, a detective type noir film. Um, I always wanted it to have more when I was younger. I thought it needed like a jam or a guitar solo or something more bombastic. But over the years, the sort of low key yet undeniably intense nature of it um, and Mark Knopfler's ability to be restrained or maybe this is the most he can give, whichever one it is. I like to think he was choosing to be restrained and I admire him for that. But either way, I think it's just a great set piece of a song. It is it is going back to the line Skate Away from Skate Away, which I'm going to drop all the time in this list. Um, the music makes me want to be the movie and the movie was whatever was the song. This is a movie song, undoubtedly. You know, Humphrey Bogart, Sam Spade, you know, that kind of thing. Just uh, I love it, love it. Uh, number seven would be higher on the list if I had not heard it 4,972 times. That might even be a low ball esti estimation. Sultans of Swing, like it's a great song. Like if I was ranking these by their best songs, I would probably put this at number one. Like it's undeniably great. The rhythm section, the band itself, the drums, the guitar, Everything about this is fantastic. And this is just the song. Live on Alchemy, when they add, add that coda at the end of it, one, the actual song itself, because of the drummer that's on that live, Terry Williams, right, I think is his name. Terry Williams? Why does that sound weird? Um, but the drummer who plays on Alchemy Live after uh, after um, uh, Pick Withers left, that drummer is fantastic. And his drumming on Alchemy, the live album, is Stupid good. Is it Terry Williams? Yeah, Terry Williams on drums. Fantastic drummer. I have no idea what else he played for. Um, Welsh drummer, played in a bunch of bands. Love Sculpture, Dave Edmonds band. Huh, interesting. Oh, he was in Man. Uh, he was in Rock Pile. Okay, there we go. But yeah, he is fantastic on this album, um, Alchemy Live. So anyways, uh, yes, Souls of Swing. You all know it. I think it's a great song. I think it's one of the best scene songs out there. Like we have like What a Nightlife Is in London or South of London or South of London Town or wherever we are. Like you feel like you're on the streets going to a jazz club and there's competing music across the street and all. It's just a great scene description song. And the fact that there's like, it's all guitar and they mention horn trumpet playing bands, yet there's no horns anywhere in sight. Love the fact that we don't get a saxophone or any sort of horns in this. Um, and the fact at the end, when they save that, we are the sultans of swing, they save that for the end. It just works. It also works as another movie song, another perfect example of Knopfler's lyrics, creating a very re real and vivid movie or scene or something that you could like, perfect for a music video long before there were music videos. Um, sultans of Swing, number seven. Uh, number six, um, I have these backwards on my list. Um, hold on, let me fix my list really quick. I had things mixed up on my list. I knew they were wrong, even though I typed them out this way. Uh, number six is Once Upon a Time in the West, the lead off track off Communique, which is a just another great kind of nice 
mid-tempo, nice jammy number, some excellent guitar playing. Absolutely love the lyrics. There is a line in here about, uh, uh, you might even get a bullet from a peacekeeping force. Um, even the hero gets shot in the chest or dies in the chest. Not good with lyrics. But the idea that this was written in like the late 70s, and if you were to release it today, we here in the United States could really take these lyrics and be like, yeah, this is what it's like in the West today. Violence, like you're afraid of cops, they're killing people like crazy, they kill people and then they lie about it, and then we get body cam footage and we find out, oh, you were completely lying about everything you said. So like the whole undercurrent of maybe this is the West, um, you know, whether it's the West us or like the Western West or who knows. I always thought it was like the Western, you know, like going to the West, like 1800s America, that kind of expansion type thing, um, cowboys and Native Americans and stuff like that. Um, but it, it feels more like it's contemporary, like it could be about living in the West now and the dangers of that. Um, but just a great song, great groove, great energy, great performance um, on what is a, a ridiculously underrated album, their second one, Communique. But that's my number six. I had it at number five, and then I had this number five and number six, but I had to switch those because a number five is Telegraph Road, the opening track off Love Over Gold. This is another movie. Um, I'm going to find the name uh, I think it was Virgin Soil was the name of the book that um, uh, Knopfler, um, Virgin Soil, that Knopfler uh, based this on. It is a book I read about 10 years ago, and it's about a man who goes into, um, no, Virgin Soil is not this. Darn it. No, man, I cannot remember the name of that book. I probably should have looked it up before I started this um before I started this video. But it's about a book that was written in the late 1800s about a man who just kind of tries to escape society and goes into the wilderness and builds a house and pretty soon somebody else comes wandering up the same dirt trail um, that he went on and they're like, hey, can I build mine over here? Um, and then they build a house and then somebody else comes on and builds a house and before you know, The Growth of the Soil, that is the, the name of the book. Excellent book. It's Newt Ham Hampson. Um, and yeah, he just... Uh, the book is great because it's really a no-nonsense, like walked in the woods, he built a house, these people came. It's really just a chronological history of the sort of how this one man changes an entire area that he wanted to just live by himself. And uh, Knopfler has taken that and sort of updated that to modern times. So now we have like streetcar racing at night and red lights and green lights and all that other stuff when before it was written in like, you know, a much, uh, uh, a much earlier time. Early 1900s, I guess, I think is when it was written. But yeah, it's a great book. Um, but anyways, this is a great song. It's one of those, like, it's a movie song. Like, you can see the movie playing out before you. It's like, it's long, it's mellow. It's maybe a little slower paced than I liked at a younger age. But over time, I've come to appreciate his, his again, his either ability to be restrained or his lack of energy and how it works so well. Um, but yeah, a, another just great sort of epic slightly proggy, lengthy, drawn out 14 minute song. Uh, my number five, Telegraph Road. Number four, the opening track. We got three opening tracks in a row right here. Uh, the opening track to Making Movies, Tunnel of Love. Um, a song about being young, going to like an area, like a boardwalk type area where there's music and there's like games and there's rides and you fall in love with somebody and like you make plans to see them again. They give you a little piece of their heart or locket or piece of hair or something like that. Maybe a little, a keepsake and a kiss. Oh, what great memories. Uh, I went to Knott's Berry Farm once, which is an amusement park in Buena Park, California when we were kids. And uh, I was in, must've been in junior high and we made friends with a, uh, so, some people, some girls from another uh, junior high school, though our junior high schools were all elementary back then, K through eight. So we made friends with some other, uh, some girls and we hung out with them all day. And at the end of that night, I must've been seventh or eighth grade, uh, I got a, I got a keepsake and a kiss. I got a phone number and a little kiss from a blonde girl named Jennifer. Um, and so the first time I heard this song, man, did I fall in love with this song. Just absolutely fantastic probably should be higher on the list for that reason alone but i also can't deny the greatness of the next three songs so um but yeah tunnel of love just another really good kind of slightly proggy kind of epic-y some nice indulgent guitar parts towards the end it kind of slows down and gets drawn out 
excellent rhythm work. Yeah, just an excellent, excellent song. Um, and this was essentially a three-piece band, but like Roy Baton from Baton, is that how you say his name? From um, uh, the E Street Band joined in, and you can definitely feel his effect on sort of like the epicness of these songs, sort of that Thunder Road, Jungle Land epicness kind of seeping in, epicness kind of seeping in, epicosity. Is that a word? Um, number four, Tunnel of Love. Number three, Romeo and Juliet. Nice acoustic little number about little Romeo hitting up on a hitting on a sweet little Juliet, star-crossed lovers. Hey, you know, screaming at the balcony, saying, "Hey, la, my boyfriend's back." Some great, great lyrics. Another song where Mar where Mark Knopfler snaps. I will anytime he snaps. It's just great. That in private investigations, but he snaps in here. Um, yeah, it's just a beautiful song with great lyrics. It's definitely about a love song. It's and it's also about how like they were uh this it's it's really sad actually, I'm realizing, because they were lovers and then um they see each other after they've sort of like um meet and she kind of disowns him, right? Like because they're uh star-crossed lovers. Um uh, like when when you're gonna realize it's just that the time was wrong, Juliet. But there's a line where he's like, like she kind of ignores him, or like kind of like, hey man, oh how can you look at me as if I was just another one of your deals? Oh that line, um, how can you look at me as if I was just another one of your deals? Man, we were in love, Juliet. How can you do that to me? When we made love, you used to cry. You said, I love you like the stars above. Oh, I just love this song. One of the most like, like it's one of those that's like a great love song from just a stories perspective. But if you've ever been in love with somebody and had a connection and then later on, they just are like, hey, whatever, wasn't anything special. Man, this touches that nerve like better than almost any song. Uh, just a phenomenal song. And, and the way Knopfler delivers it, the way he snaps, the music, the intro, that little acoustic finger-picked intro. What a beautiful, beautiful song. Romeo and Juliet, number three. Number two, um, the reason I'm doing any Dire Straits videos, It Never Rains, the closing track off Love Over Gold, an underrated masterpiece um, excellent lyrics, a lot of lyrics, it has a very Dylan-esque feel, but not in like an obvious Dylan-esque feel. The melody is a little Knopfler sweet, but it grows on you, I think, quickly. Um, and it's neat because the, the music, it's kind of just the same thing over and over again, but it has that Dylan energy where like in his live shows where a lot of his songs, you kind of just get the same musical ideas over the course of the length of the song. But there's like this snowball, this locomotive effect where you can just feel the momentum and the energy build as the song goes on and the lyrics go on and the story sort of intensifies. And that's what this does. And then about halfway through it drops into this much tighter and slightly funkier groove. And then when the lyrics are done, Knopfler just solos his way out of the song and his playing is probably maybe my favorite playing on any Knopfler song um, is the closing jam of It Never Rains. Just so perfect, so beautiful, so like the highlight of any Dire Straits album is Mark Knopfler's guitar playing for me. And this is maybe his best little three minute pocket of just beautiful, beautiful soloing as far as the studio albums go. It's just an absolutely underrated masterpiece that does not get the love it deserves. And my number one song, the song that made me buy my first Dire Straits album, that sort of is one of those that is the lyrics are in my head so often because the music makes me want to be the story. And the story was whatever was the song, but it's Skate Away. Everything about this from that opening, just sort of like energy with the drums to the way the guitar comes in with that din 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 part, the whole part about like, um, when he goes doo doo and he like slides his guitar because she almost gets hit by a car, I think, while she's skating away. It's just a woman who's just like skate skating away on her roller skates. She's got her earphones in and she doesn't care about anything else because she's got the music in her ears. Um, no fear alone because she's sailing through her crowd. In her, fears, the, in her ears, the phones are tight and the music's playing loud. Um, she says, Toro, Toro, taxi. See you tomorrow, my son. I swear she let a big trap grease her hip. Wow, wow. Just little touches that make this so beautiful. But again, the rhythm section is so tight. I think his performance is one of the best performances. The guitar playing is great. The whole theme of it about just 
music and its power and being lost in the music, even though you're in, you're in the middle of a big city with our truck drivers and taxi drivers and all these people. Like, oh, it is like one of the greatest, this is why music is so awesome type songs. Um, what this is about and the way, everything about this song is just, uh, it's perfect. Skate away. What a ridiculously good song. But yeah, that's it. Those are my 10 songs. They're right there. That's the list on one of those sides of my fingers. Um, my favorite. Um, again, I think we had one song off their debut album, one song off Brothers in Arms, none on On Every Street. Then everything else is from those middle three, right? We got three off Making Movies, three off Love Over Gold, and then I guess we have two, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not gonna count these, and then two off uh, Communique. Yeah, that's the math. Anyways, yeah, that's my list. Tell me which ones I missed, tell me which ones like I should put on here. I'm not gonna tell you what number 11 is, but I will give you a clue. It's also not on um, Brothers in Arms or on Every Street. So anyways, but yeah, that's my list. Tell me yours if you want to, or subscribe or like or share, or more importantly, and the reason all this happens is go listen to music and start with It Never Rains and discover the absolute joy that is that underrated masterpiece. But that's it, people. Thanks for watching. Peace and take care, y'all.